Hi guys and welcome back to Pass the Move. And for today's episode, we're back uh, with the game against Inter, of course the Milan Derby, as we promised in the last episode. So of course, if you did that, if you did miss that episode, def definitely check it out. Uh, we had back-to-back -back games against uh, Napoli and Juve, or was it Juve and Roma rather? Uh, huge games, of course, that you know uh, kind of defined our season. And as you can tell from the league table, we played a couple of games since. We won 25 games for the season. Juve are uh, a huge 10 points ahead of us, but they have a game in hand, and uh, you know we're in fifth place, which isn't great news for us at all. We have to secure Champions League football. The good news, of course, is that uh, you know we're just uh, we're, pre we're only in fifth place because of uh, goal difference, and uh, we can try and amend that today against Inter. Uh, it's why the Milan derby is an even bigger derby than usual because it is a battle between fourth and fifth, uh, and uh, it's going to be a huge, you know, fixture uh, in order for, in order to see which team will actually get Champions League football and which won't. So uh, we've gone through a bit of a poor run of form, really. And uh, just to give you an idea, where we showed you last game was Roma. So we managed to beat Udinese and Sassuolo back to back. So that gave us nice little points to uh, catch up on. You know, these lose well, not really picking up uh, any major points in these three games here. Um, unfortunately, after that, we managed to draw against Genoa. A very disappointing draw. And uh, you know, uh, Juan only scored through a free kick. Andre Silva tried to. Uh, you know, uh, secure the result for us afterwards, but unfortunately, could only grab one right after half time. And my players couldn't go on and get a winner. Uh, against Fenerbahce, 4 0 was a perfect first leg result at home. Uh, Bonaventura, Silva, and Lucas all on the score sheet once more. But And then we also followed up with a poor result against Spal, uh, where Federico scored with Rodriguez getting sent off and uh, of course scored from a penalty as it says they're very disappointing with four minutes to go we just had to see out the game and we were doing that relatively well uh, but the last minute giveaway penalty and we couldn't you know get a winner and we've lost two points basically it's definitely two points dropped um, but yeah as you can tell you know despite these results Juventus still aren't that far ahead of us they were about seven points away from us last time uh, in the last episode as well so it looks like they've dropped a couple of points and unfortunately you know if we won the games that we should have been winning in truth uh, then uh, we could have easily closed that gap to the Serie A title instead our inconsistency has costed us once more and uh, you know we need to do better I always mention if you want a league if you want to win a league you need to uh, ensure that you don't lose or draw more than five games each so you can't have more than five draws you can't have more than five losses and we're over that limit already, so unless we win every single game from now on until the end of the season, I don't see us winning the Serie A, but I think we're very much in contention for Champions League spaces, and uh, the only way we'll drop into Europa League is if we don't perform consistently. But more importantly, we just need to get a result here today uh, against Inter, of course, the fixture for February, as we mentioned. It's going to be a huge game, and we need to try and win it. So, of course, uh, after beating Fenerbahce, uh, we also drew away from home 1-1, but that was a hugely important result. We already kind of secured the win in the first leg. Uh, but, yeah, we drew Hertha, German team. We should be able to get into the quarterfinals, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think we'll be quite all right. Uh, and uh, just to give you an idea what the rest of the teams are, there's Villarreal, Arsenal, Anderlecht, Copenhagen, uh, Lyon, Lugano, Lazio, PSV, Zenit, uh, Rio San Sebastian, Hertha, of course, who we're facing, Napoli, Atletico Bilbao, Ajax, and Sevilla. Uh, so, of course, I think we're very much uh, capable of winning the Europa League. The question is whether we can perform on the day itself. Arsenal uh, and maybe even Napoli possibly our biggest rivals. But some very decent teams in here as well who could potentially surprise us. So let's see how it goes. Of course, if we do fall in the Europa League spots but still win the Europa League itself, we'll still get Champions League football. So that's all that, that you know, it's quite a big thing that matters as well. Uh, so we can't take the competition lightly either. Anyways, I think we can... Go ahead and get into today's game. Uh, we're going to go with this lineup here today. Donnarumma, of course, the Serie A goalkeeper for us. Uh, Paletta, Romanoli, and Sabata are going to be playing for us. They're all in good form. Calabria and Aaron are going to be playing in the wing backs. We've got Lucas, uh, Montelivo, Suso, Bonaventura, and Silva who make up the rest of the team. And as you can tell, uh, even the backup players who are playing, you know, I prefer putting in uh, other players uh, such as. Uh, you know, Kessie should be playing, Musacchio and uh, or Matteo as you can say, or, and Benucci as well, huge, you know, uh, players to drop for this game. But unfortunately for us, as you can tell, poor form. It's not even just decent form, just outright poor form. Frank Kessie as well, his form's recently improved a tiny bit, uh, but that's from coming on from the bench. And uh, the way Montelivo's been playing of late means I shouldn't really drop him. So hopefully, 
they can continue proving their worth today and uh, these are the types of games to really prove your worth basically so uh, what an opportunity to do it we're away from home so we're not necessarily the favorites but as i mentioned a win should get us into champions league spots so it's going to be a huge result uh, we can start putting pressures on the team above us and uh, get our, i think our rightful uh, you know, position of being in the Champions League spots, I think it's a fair thing in truth of how the season's gone on, but uh, we're going to have to be very careful and uh, to, in order to avoid being in the Europa League. And it is a very attacking lineup from Inter. 4 2 3 1 again. Hopefully, we take advantage of uh, the space here left and behind uh, the wingers. I've noticed a lot of teams now in order to counter attack, uh, counter attack, I guess, counter attack our tactic, if that makes sense. Um, They've been doing. They've been basically making sure that their wingers track, man mark our wing backs, and so they've somewhat dealt with the threat so far. But if our wing backs just are a hint better in their movement, uh, then we'll, you know, they should still be able to do with that threat relatively well, uh, and you know, take advantage of their poor man marking skills. Uh, but yeah, they've managed to sell uh, Cardi, I think, to Arsenal during the January transfer window. So they do have Santander, who's. Probably not as good, but he's their average, best average rating, so he looks like he's doing quite well for them. And I think, uh, you know, player for player, we've, you know, we're in this. I think we can definitely win the game. Um, but it's all about performing. So we're underdogs. I think going for the revenge team talk seems to be the appropriate one to go for, especially due to our recent form. Can't be too demanding. I think I learned my mistake last time from the last episode. There's a couple of things that we need to change, such as showing the key highlights. We want to go on medium speed and just show you the replays as well i think i'm also you know when we do these one let's go extended highlights for whenever we have these one game episodes we'll just show you every possible highlight uh so i'm not necessarily sure who clicked off the ball uh, kicked off the game but i'm gonna assume it's inter considering they've had 100 possession and it's down to us to win it back and we've done well there through bonaventura aaron with the ball lobs it forward to silver bit of a poor one to be honest uh, but silver does well to recover and a nice little high tempo football in truth so if you can just keep that up that'd be good silver early chance no no chances there either way first half chance of the game if that's anything to go by we we'll should cruise silver coming out wide for the ball bonaventura or fabino actually yeah not fabino sorry i've forgotten his name is suso but fabio barini is the one that i was trying to say Oh, Perisic gets in behind the wing back instead. Oh, and he cuts in, and the, the person is supposed to be covering, which is uh, uh, Romanoli, Alessio. Uh, didn't necessarily do too good of a job there in terms of covering. He was in the right position. He just got, you know, outmaneuvered, I suppose. Montelivo from outside the box. Very decent shot. Can Bonaventura still put it in the box? Nope, piece tackled down really well, but uh, very much a bit of a back and forth. But I think we've been a hint more... Um, dangerous but uh, you know as the saying goes we have to prove it on the scoreline and not just in terms of the stats here these stats don't matter in the end of the day it's just the ones in the top left corner but yeah i think there's definitely going to be some changes we need to make in the upcoming summer we definitely don't have a full squad to challenge for the title our starting 11 is very much good enough for it but our backup 11 our rotational options i suppose are not good enough the problem is our finances are in a very poor state my the board aren't investing money back into the squad the projections aren't looking good at all i'm hoping champions league football like i mentioned in the last episode addressed that as well as uh you know maybe um going far in the ch in, in in europa league as well oh that's a dangerous ball and uh, alessio deals with it well but he's the teammates giving it away poorly and candreva can still get another ball into the box santander rises one hell of a head and we kind of dissed him in the early stages of the game but he's done well here and from a chance that you wouldn't even consider half chances the match ends and it says he's managed to score we're gonna get a nice little 3d replay of that even though i don't necessarily want to see it yeah, look at this from Paletti. He tries to pass it to his teammate, I suppose. But that's just a poor ball. Grassini picks up on it. Kandreva's there. And he delivers a nice little chipped cross. And he rises above this guy right here. Don't know his name. I think that's Zapata, if I'm not mistaken. There you go. Um, but yeah, so because of our finances, I don't think we can necessarily afford to invest in our squad. So we're going to have to try and look for bargains, loans maybe uh free transfers i'm gonna have to look at that market as well but the problem is we're already in february a lot of those good free transfers are potentially already gone anyways inter try to score from a set piece again it's outside the box for Kandreva, and we can deal with that threat all day long 
but we need to somehow pick ourselves up after conceding that poor goal and try and punish Inter instead. But they're trying to do that here. Mario, Valero, Candreva again. Worked it fairly well, but again, it's an outside the box shot, so we have no issues with that. They can have those shots all day long. But we're not, you know, we seem short of confidence at the moment. It's a couple of players nervous and frustrated. Montelivo, Suso from outside the box, what's he going to do? Back to Bonaventura. Montelivo, Suso, is he going to shoot? No, he does, but it's going to have to be better than that. Was inside the box, he really should have done better in truth, but uh, if he dribbled in a little bit more and then squared it off to someone else, he might have been better off. Anyways, poor goal kick I suppose, the Ambrosio picks it up for Inter. And so far it's Inter who've looked better player for player rather than ourselves. Valero, he's free. Thankfully he doesn't have this sense of mind to turn and play someone through instead he goes back and uh, Mario tries to be the playmaker I suppose. Montelivo though wins the ball back well and he's proving why he should be in the team ahead of Kessie and Suso plays a really nice through ball into the opposite winger. Silva's free. He should be finishing those chances. That's a clear cut chance and all round good play. Nice little counter attack but uh, you know if we don't finish those chances we're never going to win the game and Inter still survive at 1-0. Set piece. Paletta decent header it's going to be, again, we need a little bit better. We're just a tiny bit short of quality. If we can convert our chances, we can definitely still find ourselves winning this game. And let's enter our other plans here. Mario. D'Ambrasio, square two. I'm not even going to bother saying that name. Candreva. Always to be, seems to be free and always finds a cross regardless of the situation. Thankfully Santander can't react to that, but Mario's got a decent shot away there. Inter still proving that, even with our chances, that they are a tiny bit of a threat to us still. And very much still going for the second uh, goal. They're not trying to settle for 1-0. But Handovic there, as you can see, 7.0 rating for the goalkeeper. And there's no real surprise that he's done quite well for them and saved them during important times. Zapata's the one who's at fault for that goal and he's gotten a 6.4 rating so that's uh it's nice to see that the ratings are reflective silver's missed his chances so he's also you know not doing too well tactically let me just make sure that zapata's comfortable he prefers to be on the right so that's fine paletta ah oh, zapata prefers to be on the right too so let's see if we can change that around and see if that helps zapata perform any better all right so definitely need to tell them off see whether that can get any reaction out of them but Silva will be coming off at the earliest opportunity for Nicola, who's uh, still got plenty to prove, I'd say. Alright, boys, better second half. Not in truth, that first half should be winning the game for us, but uh, it's not enough to just create chances, you need to convert them. Montelivo has got a bit of time on him, does well to find Bonaventura. Silva's there. What can he do, though? Ah, oh, it's the wrong ball, should have found the winger, he went for the wing back instead and as I mentioned you can see that they're tracking our wing backs to try and uh, counteract our tactics. Valero, not a bad free kick but don't want to see those happening anyways. Not much of a reaction after telling them off, Suso though brings it down well but then he just loses it to, the, to De Ambrosio anyways and Perisic God, that didn't work out. I thought he was going to take the shot. Instead, he goes to Santander and uh, wasn't as clinical as he was in the first half. Montelivo, though, got the ball back well. Don't lose it. Lucas, the playmaker. Calabria's free and forward. If you can just find someone in the box. Silva's there. And that man is coming off. And I don't know how that doesn't count as a second click at chance. But anyways, uh, let's just see what happens. Let's give it to about the 60th minute. Just like I, how I usually like to make my substitutions but Silva begging to be taken off at this point I don't want to jinx it but I think I will <laughs> I think we've been a bit more better a bit more better I think we've been better defensively but Inter are punishing us again but Perisic far post yes thank god that went out there was definitely a clear cut chance the first for Inter 
they couldn't convert it and uh, the wing back losing the winger this time. Alright then, time for some changes. Silva's definitely the one to go. Pretty much everyone else has quite been quite decent, but there's some backup players who we can potentially re replace for better players. So we'll take off Montevivo. We actually seem to be having a decent game if you ask me, but he's got a 6.7 rating. We'll bring on Cassie, see what we can do. Any other first teamers who should be on the pitch here? Um, ooh, there is something I want to show you after the game, show you guys, but we'll talk about that after. Aaron, oh, Ricardo Rodriguez is off because he's suspended. Alright, then I guess we'll save that last change for a little bit later on. Hopefully these wingers can perform a bit better with the... Uh, a better striker option, I suppose. I'm just hoping they can still create the same chances that created for Andre. And uh, I need to hope that Nicola can, can, you know, can actually convert them as well. So make some tiny little changes. I think work the ball into the box and pass into space will do us good, as well as being more expressive. I think that's the only way to go at this point. Um, and potentially we can see more shots and more shots on target if the players work the ball around a little bit better. I think passing in behind Inter seems to have worked in the first half, so we need to do that hint more. We're going to look to bring on Hakan in just a moment's time as well. Decent performances from both Suso and Bonaventura, but we need a little bit better, so we're going to try and get that from Hakan. We're going to switch into advanced playmaker as well, give us a bit more of a creative threat uh, from our front trio. The question is whether it will have the right effect or not, because right now we're not you know, neither side is creating anything of the note. Not good to see. Come on boys, even a point now would be good. Can't go down to that poor goal in the first half. Looks like we're going to anyways though, so that's not good to see. Ball into box doesn't seem to work too much. Uh, we can be a bit stronger on the width, I think. Definitely still keep passing space. Don't want to encourage them to shoot from, you know, shoot on sight and from long distance. Uh, we can look for the overlap though. I just want to use our wide players a hint more. See if that has any effect on the game. Great, and Hakan's picked up a knock. That's nice to see. Alright then, 5 minutes injury time, Perisic injured for his team, they're a man down now I think, it's still 3 minutes, but that's as poor a throw in as you're ever going to see, and Santander is going to try and get his team on the counter attack. Come on, stop it and hit them back, counter the counter attack, nope, Kandreva there again, Santander, one hell of a ball to Eder. Are you kidding me, how did he score... What I want to say about this game, right, is that would never happen in real life. What we just saw, at least in 2D. We're going to get a better chance in 3D, but... This is just good hold-up play all round. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Are you kidding me? That needs to be addressed, because never in history... Actually, some crazy things have happened in football in real life as well, so let me not say that, but that's some poor decision making. I want to see if Donnarumma's rating has actually gone down to reflect that, because if the game doesn't recognise that that was Donnarumma's uh, mistake, then something funky is going on. It's a ridiculous shot from Kessie, and Inter are going to come away with the result that they deserve, you have to say. They created two clear cut chances, they didn't necessarily score from both of them, but they did get the two goals. They actually scored, the two goals they scored weren't even chances at all. Uh, we failed to, you know, score our clear cut chance or our half chance or any chance for that matter. And, um, you know, you have to credit into, they kept trying and they plugged away and they scored 
two goals, and the first one was actually really good, but the second one has seriously set us back now at this point, and now we have to start to consider putting all our eggs in one basket in the sense of uh, the Europa League. Still early though, of course, there is still about 13 games or so for the season's end, the Serie A season. Uh, you know, it's still plenty of twists and turns, I suppose, but uh, this is not a result that we're looking forward to. This is not good at all. I mean, I know we weren't favourites, but yeah, definitely not good. Alright then, so let's have a look at when we'll be back. Uh, we're going to start risking dropping out of the Europa League spots completely as well, but... Uh, let's look at the schedule... All right, so that was the game for February, so we need to have a look at March. There's from Verona to about Torino, and you have to say Torino's potentially the more attractive option. Verona are ninth. Atlanta 14th, Torino 8th, and I think that is the bigger game. Hertha would be nice to show you as well, but still second knockout round, not a huge, necessarily huge game. But if the first leg is quite open, maybe we'll show you the second leg instead, but Torino is the one to look out for. I think, I don't know whether I'm imagining things, but I think we have a bit of a rivalry with them as well. Inter, Juventus, Roma, Napoli, Fiorentino, Lazio, Verona. Oh, we have a bit of a rivalry with Verona and Atlanta. Uh, but I got it wrong and it wasn't Torino at all, it was the two teams we were facing before that. Uh, but anyways, I think still Torino is the one we're going to aim for. A bit of a gap to try and regain some points as well, just two games really and uh, two Europa League games. Um, but that end of the season here with Napoli, Fiorentina, that's going to be the one that will really define our season. So I think, it's, you know, for May, for April, sorry, definitely be showing you that Fiorentina game or that Sampdoria game. Either one could be potentially huge. Uh, and Napoli definitely for that last game of the season. It's going to be a terrible way to end it, but if we can win, then who knows. But, I mean, if you just have a look at our season, the beginning, quite poor. And actually, this is the worst period we've been through. Having a look at it now, but uh, even when we grab a bunch of wins, we just randomly lose. Like, there's five wins in a row, and then just randomly lose 5-1 to Copenhagen like it was nothing bunch of wins again and lose 5-0 to Fiorentina. The team is just ridiculously inconsistent and uh, definitely need to step up if we want to try and do anything. But anyways, the news that I did want to show you is actually we managed to sell someone that you might have noticed and that is Abate, 5 million to Quanjin, uh, China of course. Uh, we got rid of his 70 plus uh, wages, so that's decent money as well. Um, but the main reason is that Conti is very close to returning from his injury, so we didn't necessarily need three right backs anymore, and Abate was the disposable player. And at the same time, that uh, offer from China kept coming in, so I thought, if we're ever going to sell him, now's the time to sell him rather than wait for the summer and have three fullbacks complaining about not enough game time. Um, but yeah. So I think that's all for today's episode. So if you did enjoy it, then of course, please hit the like button and subscribe for more Daily Football Manager 2018 content. And of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, and as always, guys, once again, thank you all very much for watching.